that the final separation of the timelines takes place, which means that's when the matter base that can't hold the higher frequency goes into the phantom uh, time matrix probability, and where the bridge zone would completely separate from that, and then from there, the ascension cycle, when it goes all the way up to Terra, would happen. This is, when I read this part to you, it's what we would be experiencing if we were not able to create a buffer zone. So the buffer zone is the solution to this. And the buffer zone depends on the indigos waking up. Because the indigos need to be able to run enough frequency to get those anchoring rods put in, the bivector and trivector anchoring rods through the round tables. If that happens, we're not, it will, this stuff is still going to take place, but we won't see it in the hologram because we'll be in like a little bubble of frequency. The planet will be. That will be the buffer zone. So the transitions will be going on around us. And the most we would see is certain things might disappear on the third day of particle conversion. And some people might disappear. They're the ones that went into a different timeline. But the majority of people would be sustained by the frequencies that are in the buffer zone from the uh, Miyage zone time cycle. Now, three days of darkness and the sound. Upon the initiation of the first wave of transmutation, three days of cold darkness begin on Earth. Through the transmutation process, the natural density one, the 789 frequency subharmonics of the planetary Merkaba, magnetosphere, ionosphere, exosphere, and magnetic, magnetic fields convert directly to density two electrical pulse as the density one to Lurk shield, Earth's template, begins fusion with the density two Duratic shield, Terra's template of Terra. The photonic hydrogen-based elements that make up the transmuted outer atmosphere of density one Earth represent superluminal density two photons, transharmonic photons, and subparticle units that move faster than the speed of density one light, and thus appear as the absence of light in density one. Stationed in density one, the fusion of the earth tara shield is perceived as density one light disappearing as Earth's atmosphere reaches a superluminal state and is transmuted into density three sound, density two light. And it says, no, density one light spectrum is the density two sound spectrum. Density two light spectrum is the density three sound spectrum, etc. As the light disappears, the sound comes. The greatest quantity of sound wave spectra in the sound we speak of is primarily inaudible to the external human ear. Rather, this sound is heard as a sound within the head and inner ears that begins as a low, deep hum, then a deep rumble, and progresses upward in tone to a building sound of higher-pitched static, eventually to become a steady, high-pitched whine. Biology, density 2 light, density 3 sound, DNA, celestiline, and atomic transmutation. It is the sound waves of density 3, uh, density 2 light, emerging into density 1 Earth's atmosphere and matter base that cause the matter forms and biologies that cannot hold the faster oscillating shorter wavelength frequencies to implode. Holding interdimensional sound frequencies requires that a form have in its blueprint template the corresponding dimensional sequences of scalar wave units or fire letters. Human DNA and that of numerous other Earth life forms has the capacity to hold interdimensional sound waves and thus, thus such life forms can survive the three-day particle conversion period of a stellar activation cycle if the DNA is functioning properly.